Welcome to Mr. Math Academy, Grow Your Math Brain. Hello friends, welcome back to Mr. Math Academy. So today in this video, we will write an equation for the what will be the volumetric strain for a circular bar. So in the previous video, we have derived an equation for the what is the volumetric strain for the rectangular bar here. Now we just continue for the same thing here. So the process is same, that is the procedure is same, there is no changes. First we need to find out what will be the volume of the member. So again after finding the volume here, you just divide the partially, means we have to differentiate partially. So after that one more equation we are going to get here, just dividing the equation 2 and equation 3, the simplification, if you just, if you just, simpli if you just simplify that equation, we can get, easily get the, what is the volumetric strain for the given member here. Now this is the, what I am considering the, uh, that is a circular bar here, whose length is L and the cross sectional diameter is D. Now let us consider what I have taken here is, so consider a circular bar, so this will be the circular bar of circular bar of cross sectional diameter, okay, we are just taking the cross sectional dia diameter is D. Okay, just cross sectional diameter I am just taking the D and length L. Okay, and this will be the this will be having a length L. Now, so for this circular bar, we know that the volume is what it's a we know that volume V is equal to it's a area into length. It's a area into length here. So now we are, what will be the area here? It's a cross sectional diameter we are taking is, it's a pi d square by 4. So area becomes, it's a pi d square by 4 and this is the length L here. Now this will be the volume here. If suppose if I take, this is the equation 1. Now to find out the volumetric strain, so volumetric strain is nothing but, it's a change in volume to the original volume here. So already we have a original volume that is a equation 1. Now what will be the change in volume delta V. So the delta V is nothing but it's a we have to differentiate this equation 1 partially. So we have to derive this equation 1 partially. Now I'll derive means I'll derive means I'll just differentiate equation 1 partially. Differentiate differentiate equation 1 partially okay i have to differentiate the equation 1 partially so that what i am going what i am going to get here in the left hand side it's a delta v the right hand side part is what so this pi by 4 is a constant okay i just take outside here now only thing is for d square into l i have to differentiate so to differentiate d square into l so this is a product rule we have to apply so product rule means the first term into differentiation differentiation of the second term plus second term into differentiation of the first term if suppose if i take d by dx of u into v so what i am doing here so i'll just keep the first term as it is so i have to differentiate into delta v similarly keep v as it is differentiate delta u so this is a partial differentiation like product rule we are applying similarly i'll apply the product rule for this d square and l i'll keep d square as it is and i'll differentiate l partially so that i'm going to get delta l here okay now plus what i'm doing here so i have to keep the second term as usual and differentiate this d square partially so differentiation of d square is what it's a 2d 2 into delta d okay like so if suppose differentiation of x yeah x to the power n is what it's a n into x power n minus 1 type okay if suppose here it's a d square i'm taking it's a 2 into d to the power 2 minus 1 that is a 2 into d so means what this is the d by dx of d square okay if suppose if i is get, getting confusion means i'll take like this so means what 2d will be coming here that's why i have written here 
tau into delta d because we are doing with the partially ok. Now, so if suppose this is that I am just taking the equation 2. Now, what we have to get here? The equation is what? It is a volumetric strain is change in volume by original volume. So, already we have got the change in volume is equation 2, original volume is a equation 1. We, we just derive, uh, we just divide the equation 2 by equation 1. Divide equation 2 by equation 1. So, what I am getting here is so a delta V by V. So, pi by 4. So, d, d square into delta L plus 2L delta D. So, in the denominator, so it is a pi by 4 d square L, pi by 4 d square L. Now, you just, we just separate the terms here. So, now this pi by 4, pi by 4 get cancelled. So, the left hand side part is delta V by V means it is a change in volume to the original volume. So, whatever it may be the change in dimensions to the original dimensions means it is a strain here. So, this is a volumetric strain. So, the right hand side part we just separate the terms. So, d square delta L by d square L plus so this 2 L delta D by so d square into L. Now, simplification. So, d square d square get cancelled. So, remaining term is delta L by L plus so 1 L 1 L get cancelled. Okay. The remaining term is again you can just see here. Okay, this small because we are differentiating this d square partially. So, we are differentiating d square partially means it becomes 2 d into delta d. We have done small mistake here. So, when we are deri uh, deriving uh, differentiating this d square partially means it will be a 2 d into delta d. So, here we have to take it is a L will be as it is here we have to take 2 L into d. Here also we should take the d here. Okay. So, here also I will just take the d. So, what happens here finally? So, this 1 d 1 d get cancelled. So, the remaining term is it is only 2 is there. So, delta d by there is a one more d we wrapped here. This is a epsilon v. Now, finally I will just write here. So, this epsilon v is equal to change in length to the original length means it is a strain in the longitudinal direction. I will just represent the same way change in the sorry, strain in the longitudinal direction and again this is a 2 is a and change in diameter to the original diameter means it is a lateral strain. So, I will write here it is a epsilon d. So, now this is the equation for the volumetric strain for a member of a circular bar here. I hope you have understood this for both the rectangular bar as well as the circular bar. Now, in the next video, we will just go for some simple numericals which is based on this volumetric strain for the rectangular as well as the for a circular bar here. At last, we I will try to write on simple thought here. So, this is somewhat like a thought for the day here. A goal without a plan is just a wish. So, means what? When we are deciding some any goal, so we should have to plan how to achieve that goal. So, if I does not plan in a proper manner, so that what I am thinking is it is just a wish. So, we cannot reach to that goal. I hope so, this will help in our life. Thank you.